George Brecker was born in Valletta, the capital city of Malta, a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, on the 12th of February 1880. His parents were Vincent and Natalie Brecker. They had nine children. George was the seventh born among his siblings. He was baptised at St Dominic's Church in Valletta on the 17th of February 1880 and was given the name George. The name George originally comes from Greek and means someone who works in the fields. Something which applies to George Precker in a spiritual way as someone who was to become a hard working servant in the field of the Lord. While growing up, George went through a number of curious but at the same time insightful events. One of these was, when George was around five, Philomena, the family housemaid, took George for a walk near the sea, not very far from their house. The sea was very calm and George thought that he could walk on it. He took the first step and started going down. Philomena shouted for help. Luckily, Michael came to the rescue, a rower in a nearby boat, ferrying people from ships to the quay. Another time, while walking with his nanny, George met a young man who looked like an army official, who stood and handed young George a golden watch. As George held the watch in his hands and looked at it, it vanished. So did the army official. Many years later, Father George realised that the young man was St Michael and the golden watch was a sign or symbol of the prayer book he later wrote and which he called the watch a booklet for SDC members to use and lift their thoughts to God and pray regularly throughout the day. Growing up, young George Brecker was academically a high achieving pupil. However, he was not really interested in sports. When his mates played football, their favourite sport, George would always be the last to be picked. Often, when everyone else would have been picked, someone would say to the other team, you can have George for free. While studying in high school, George used to find time to go down to the harbour, then a very busy place, and spend time talking to the sailors about the Christian faith. Many would come to land from merchant or naval vessels visiting the island, and George saw this as an opportunity to do good. The sailors listened to him attentively. This was an early sign of the task George was called for that of teaching others and providing instruction about our Christian faith. George walked to school and back every day. One day, as he was returning home, he met one of his teachers, a priest, Father Ercole Monpaolo, and together they walked up to Hamrun, where the family now lived. At one point, the priest turned to George and prophetically said to him, Preca, you will grow up and become a priest and people who reverently fear God will become your friends and you theirs. Through them, you will find good fortune and they will find theirs. At the time, this didn't mean much for George. It was clearly a foresighted reference to the future and the people George would be working with later on in his life through SDC, the society he founded. It was very disheartening for George to see that the few catechists available to prepare children for the sacraments at the time were not adequately prepared. Once, while still a seminarian, preparing for the priesthood, he overheard the sacristan teaching catechism to a group of children. One of them asked, If God is the creator of everything, who created him? The sacristan replied, God created himself. This inaccurate reply troubled Father George greatly and made him more resolute about starting his SDC society. As he carried on thinking about doing something to provide more robust instruction, George befriended a group of young lads who used to gather by the parish church in Hamrun, the town where he lived. Religion and spirituality wasn't something that interested this group of lads much. They passed the time smoking, talking about football and cracking jokes. George, who at the time was not yet a priest, started meeting them regularly. By time, their discussions became more faith-orientated, learning about God, Jesus Christ and Christian themes in general. As they continued to meet, the young men in the group and George became close friends. There was a special connection, especially with Eugene Borge, an industrious and lively young man. Once, Father George invited Eugene to go for a walk with him 
the following Sunday. He also told him to take with him some food and a Bible. This was the first of a series of meetings during which Father George discussed parts of the Bible and other faith matters with Eugene, who later on, and following this intense formation, joined SDC and was the first Superior General for many years. Just a few weeks before his ordination as priest, George became seriously ill. One of the best doctors on the island was called in to see him, Professor Enrico Melli. After a thorough examination, the professor said to George's father, Vince, your son will not survive. He's got a lung disease and his left lung is dead. There is no point in buying him vestments for the priesthood or a missile. The doctor's prophecy, however, did not come true. God had other plans for George. A short time before the day of his ordination, George managed to get out of bed, recovered and was eventually ordained a priest by Bishop Peter Pace on the 22nd of December 1906 in the main cathedral in Valletta. After his ordination to the priesthood, Father George spent a lot of time in prayer in his room. As time went by, he felt that God was still calling him to form the group of young men he had met so that they will in turn be able to teach others. He sought advice from the priest to whom he went for confession, Luigi Attard, who said to George, Go, open and do whatever is necessary. It was on the 2nd of February 1907 when Father George started his meetings with the group of young men at the Nutso Church in Hamroon. Soon after, they decided to rent a room in the same town and on Thursday the 7th of March 1907, the first meeting was held there, a bare, upstairs room at number 6, Fra Diego Street. When thinking about a name for the newly formed group of the members, Saviour Muscat suggested the name Museum. He argued that precious things are normally kept in a museum and our Christian faith and learning about it is a very precious thing. Others liked the name and soon one of them wrote it on a wall just using the skin of a pomegranate fruit. Father George approved of the name but when he thought about it he used each letter of the word museum to form an acrostic prayer in Latin. Magister Utinam Sequatur Evangelium Universus Mundus Master, may the whole world follow your gospel. It was fitting for the new group to have its own patron saint. So, at one of their group gatherings, Father George suggested everyone writes the name of a saint on a paper and asks a child to pick up one out of a hat. The chosen saint was Saint John the Baptist. Father George later remarked like Saint John the Baptist, SDC members were called to a life of instruction and prepared a way for the Lord. The group continued to flourish. Father George continued forming those in the group he started, teaching them aspects of theology, then only reserved for those in the priesthood. He also introduced rules for those who wanted to be part of his society. Smoking, for example, was to be prohibited. And he also wanted members who joined to be celibate and only work for the Kingdom of God, as John the Baptist did. The first SDC members became catechists themselves and soon they started opening catechism centres in a number of parishes. Some people, however, were not keen on the idea of lay people working in catechesis. In May 1909, Father George was called in for a meeting with the Vicar General at Bishop's House. At this meeting, he was told to close all SDC centres that had been opened. Father George's reply was, You are my superiors, so I am happy to obey. Following this humble act of submission to the church authorities, however, a number of parish priests contacted Bishop, supporting Father George, his society and the good work that was done through SDC. The bishop soon changed his mind and again allowed the society to continue with the work it had started. In 1910, Father George started another branch of his SDC society, this time for females. Now, women too were able to join SDC and dedicate their lives for the spreading of the good news. This was the beginning of the 20th century and at the time, girls didn't even attend school. 
No one thought of women as people who could lead catechism groups and teach children or adults. Setting up a female section of the society therefore was quite a big and brave leap at the time. Father George was always convinced that the society was from God. A very special episode that happened around the year 1911 convinced him of this. Father George recounts that he was walking in Marsa. He came across a 12 year old boy pulling a low cart with a big basket full of manure on top of it. The boy spoke to Father George and ordered him to help push the cart. As soon as Father George put his hands to the cart and started pushing, his heart was filled with great sweetness. Soon after the whole episode was over and the boy and his cart were nowhere to be seen. Father George held that the young boy in this mystic vision was Jesus himself, who was showing him that he had to give his whole life for this cause of spreading good instruction something he continued to do in a number of ways including speaking and listening to people and writing on spiritual themes. In 1915, Mons Dom Mauro Caruana was appointed as the new Archbishop of Malta. Before his appointment he was living in Scotland and was therefore not familiar with the SDC society. Upon his arrival people spoke to him about it. When some time later the new bishop met Father George, he asked him, Are you the leader of this society? Father George's reply was, Your Excellency, I am neither the head nor the leader. I am your servant. I am your priest, serving in your diocese. Later on, following the formal church inquiry, SDC was formally approved by the bishop and was able to continue to grow and thrive across the whole diocese of Malta. Father George was devoted to the words Verbum Dei Caro Factum Est The Word of God Became Flesh The special words reminding us of the mystery of the Incarnation God becoming a human being Once, when his own father was gravely ill Father George wrote these words on a piece of paper which he put on his father's chest Later on he said that after his father passed away He appeared to him saying, George, I had a very sweet judgment because of that sentence. From that day onwards, Father George became more eager to spread the devotion of Verdvom Day words and what they represent. He also wanted all SDC members and children to put on the badge that was designed with these sacred words on it. This devotion to the incarnation of Christ also led Father George to embark on new ways how to celebrate Christmas. In order to show and demonstrate what Christmas is all about, he wanted members of his society to organise a procession on Christmas Eve through the streets of villages and towns carrying the statue of baby Jesus in a manger and singing Christmas carols. The first of these events took place in 1921 in Hamrun, using a statue of baby Jesus that Father George himself borrowed from a Franciscan monk In order to be able to talk to more people and reach more children and adults, Father George travelled from one village to another on the island of Malta, often on foot or using any means of transport that was available, sometimes a tram or even getting a lift on a horse-drawn cart. Everywhere he went he drew large crowds. Often he would climb on an improvised stage and speak to people in the open air. He was also sought by many people for confession and for advice on all sorts of matters. Father George was also a writer. He regarded writing as another channel for catechesis and a way how to spread the word of God to others. He therefore spent a lot of time writing on spiritual themes that were so dear to his heart, such as the person of Jesus Christ, forgiveness, devotion to Our Lady and many others. Many people used to contact him in writing asking for advice. He then regularly spent time writing letters and replying to those who wrote to him and sought his direction. Among his many writings, one that became more notable was his suggestion for a new set of five rosary mysteries he wrote about in 1957 and which he called the Mysteries of Light. Not many people were aware of this at the time. 
It was many years later in 2002 that this set of mysteries was formally presented to the whole church by Pope John Paul II and became a formal set of mysteries for praying the rosary, often referred to as the Luminous Mysteries. As the society continued to grow and more members joined and led more catechism groups in SDC centres around Malta, Father George was inspired to take SDC beyond the shores of Malta. At one of the Wednesday general meetings for members, he shared his wish to send members to Australia. A number of members came forward. With his blessing, they made all necessary arrangements and, in 1956, they left the island and set off on a month-long journey by boat to Australia. They settled in Melbourne, where they established the first STC centre outside of Malta. At the age of 82, in July 1962, Father George became seriously ill and spent many days in agony in bed. Two days before he died, he was visited by Eugene Borges, the first Superior General, and with whom he had been working closely since the birth of SDC 55 years earlier. Looking at Eugene and his saddened look, Father George spoke to cheer him up, saying, Eugene, there's no need to cry now. In you I bless all the society. In the afternoon of the day before he passed away, Father George was feeling a bit better. The sisters of charity who were looking after him noticed him reading the gospel. Father George, don't you get tired reading? One sister asked him. No, no, I'm finding delight in the gospel of Christ, Father George replied. He passed away the following day, Thursday the 26th of July 1962, in the evening while many friends were praying for him. Many mourned his loss and huge crowds took part in his funeral. He was buried in a crypt underneath the chapel of the Miraculous Medal, a devotion he was so keen on and towards which he worked to spread devotion throughout his entire life. A few years after his death, the case for his canonization was opened. This considered whether Father Precker lived a life of sufficient holiness and virtue to be considered for sainthood. Following a lengthy process of consultation and then a miracle involving the recovery of a man who suffered from a retina detachment in his left eye, Father George was beatified by Pope John Paul II in Malta on the 9th of May 2001, a date which later became his official feast day. It was on this occasion that his remains were transferred from the crypt to a purpose-built shrine inside the chapel of the Miraculous Medal. A second miracle attributed to the intercession of Father George Precker took place in July 2001 at a London hospital. It involved the recovery of a child suffering from a serious liver malfunction and who was soon expected to have a liver transplant. This miracle, which meant that the transplant was not needed, paved the way for the final step on the way to sainthood and Father George was then canonised by Pope Benedict XVI at the Vatican City on Sunday 3rd June 2007.